Hello, welcome to this week's edition of Hong Kong Direct coming to you from Sha Tin Racecourse. And it is Sha Tin Racecourse which is going to hold the Hong Kong International Sale on Friday night. We'll learn more about that. Meet rising training star Pierre Rung and also give you the chance to vote for your favourite horse and jockey. It's a big night here on Friday night at Sha Tin when the Hong Kong International Sale take place and the man behind the sale spoke to our very own Nick Child. It's Danny Ralston. Well, Danny, great to catch up with you. It's that time of year again here in Hong Kong, the ISG sale of the Hong Kong Jockey Club. Um, firstly, how's the process gone from, from purchase to parade? Have you been happy with everything so far? Yeah, so far so good. The horses have really settled in well here in, uh, at the stables in Sha Tin, so um, that's a good sign that they're um, on their way to their successful journey after the sale. And Danny, for those that don't quite know about the process, obviously these horses that are in this catalogue have been sort of pulled from every corner of the globe almost. Um, just an overview of the process. Now, there are obviously different people buying these horses, different people preparing them. It's a big job, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, basically, we look at anywhere in the world that produces high quality thoroughbreds, and we're looking for horses specifically that suit uh, the hard, fast grass racing here in Hong Kong. and. Um, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll look at any any sale in any country that does produce this, these suitable sort of horses. Uh, Michael Canan's our contracted agent in, in the Northern Hemisphere and he's got a proven track record and obviously knows Hong Kong racing like no other and um, Great Rounds full of Boomer Bloodstock does a similar role for us in the Southern Hemisphere. So um, we're trying to bring together the, the most suitable sort of horses that we can and anything that we don't have confidence in, we just simply don't bring. Danny, I mean, on what's been and gone beforehand, we'll touch on a few that have obviously been very successful at the sales, for which there are a number. Um, how have things evolved for, for owners, or potential owners uh, attending this sale? Have any, has anything changed in the last few years, or at least in, in your time since you've been here? Yeah, look, I, I think it's a, it's a real evolution. Uh, a few years ago, obviously, the, the personnel started changing with um, Canan coming on board, and um, and obviously subsequently me, myself also, and, um, and Craig Brownsfell. So, what we've um, really striven to st striving to do is buy a better yearling, produce a better racehorse, and um, you know a lot of that comes through the finding that balance of doing enough with these horses so we know a that they're sound and b that you've got the significant uh, the satisfactory amount of ability to match up here competitively. So uh, it, it is evolving, and as we get that balance right, and we're starting to see those results of that um, of that system. We certainly are, and obviously, like anything, Danny, sales related. Um, the catalogue is forever being updated. Most recently, Nordic Dragon was was a real highlight. Obviously, he came through last year's sale, and um, he's now well, he's eclipsed his, his purchase price, which is obviously a great thing. But he's doing so a lot of the races. Yeah, and that, that's so important for us. Uh, you know, we're not really um, guided by turnover like in yeah. most sales around the world, most bloodstock sales. I mean, we're we're really uh, measured by our results. So. Um, Nordic Dragon, uh, he, he was an expensive purchase from Mr. Yu and uh, we're just v very thankful that he's been able to repay him and uh, recoup his purchase price within the first season. Nordic Dragon, he is blazing fire at the moment. He's three in front of Majestic Star, winning IC and Eastern and Nordic Dragon jogs it. Can't talk to you without asking about the horse that makes it onto the, the catalogue cover, of course, Romantic Warrior. I mean, what a, a star he's been. Um, and there is an acclamation in the sales. So I imagine he might be the for two. Yeah, for sure. And he's the last lot of the day, so there might be a few people waiting for him. And, uh, you know, he's a particularly good action horse. And um, Romantic Warrior has done amazing things for the for the image of the sale. And we're hopeful that there might be something similar in the, in the catalogue this year. And it might just be him. That is Nick Child with Denny Ralston. Denny the man that puts the sale together coming up right here at Chantin on Friday night. Well, the horses have to come from somewhere and the Northern Hemisphere horses are sourced by Mick Canane. He's been in town too to see how they are progressing leading up to the sale and he spoke to Tom Wood. Yes, I'm pleased. Uh, the horses have travelled well, they've settled in well and uh, things have gone according to plan. Um, I think we've some nice horses here um, and... Uh, They've, they've, they've pleased us at home to think that they can uh, stand up to what Hong Kong has to, has to offer. What do you look for when you buy the, the go and source these horses throughout uh, the Northern Hemisphere, uh, Kana and uh, Tata stores? What are, the, what are the horses you like to try and buy for the Hong Kong market? Well, you need a horse with some pace here, but I'm, naturally I'm trying to get the blend of speed and, and stamina. Um, I need an athlete first and foremost. Um, he's got to be able to walk and he has, has, has to appear to have a very good mind. Uh, so I'll watch monitor that closely and I know it's very important and at the last bit when he comes up into the ring that he, 
he takes it all into stride and 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 and, and his his temperament is good so you know, it's a huge combination of factors that you you got to take in and then you just hope that he passes vets and you know we were pretty stringent and then we um we put him through a fair bit of, of testing now uh, before prior to bring in so anything that's here i only think or is here because i think they have a, enough ability to be here what about the horses that you, you have selected to the ones that are down here now and they've gone through their paces um, before the breeze ups and after the breeze who would have been your picks of the sale before the breeze ups and after them what you saw yesterday have you changed your opinion at all yeah there's an acclimation horse here uh, breeze particularly well you know he's been a nice horse coming but he seems to have really uh, enjoyed the trip and has grown grown a bit mentally you know so uh, there's a very nice invincible spirit and there's a very very nice no no never so you know, there's some nice horses here. I, I brought six horses and I think they should be here. What was the, the, the opinion, general opinion around you, your thoughts on the, the acclimation? Because I, I did think he breathed very well yesterday. What drew you to purchasing him? Yeah, he was a lovely... I was trying to find a model of Romantic Warrior. He doesn't quite have his substance, uh, but was a lovely athlete and has been... I've been happy to him ever since. He's a little bit light, maybe, but... Um, and when he got on the grass here, he really loved the surface. And uh, so, you know, he has taken to the place really well and hopefully he can, he can produce it on the track. And you can find out plenty more about the sale on the website hkjc.com and you'll find the dedicated Hong Kong International Sale sub-site. We move from the sale to a rising star when it comes to training. He's in his first season. He trained a treble here on Sunday. His name is Pierre Rung, and this is part one of the Pierre Rung documentary. At the end of the 2021-22 season, it was announced that Pierre Ung, the son of former Hong Kong trainer Peter Ung, would be awarded a trainer's license for the 2022-23 season. Well, uh, actually, he was learning to ride when he was at eight each Sunday. I took him to Beach River and practice riding. He woke up very early in the morning and uh, wait for me uh, to take him there. To get into this job, obviously, is my dad. When he was on a job and uh, used to come into the stables and go to track work and um, go to sales, travels around with him. So that was um, get it started. Once I was graduated and I started off working with him to be a track work rider for five years. And then after that, I was uh, promoted to be an assistant trainer to a pro. So. He's a very well-educated man and his public relations amongst the owners was outstanding. He had a good rapport with the staff. One of the most difficult jobs in Hong Kong was placing your horses and whenever I had a problem, he had a solution. I sort of headhunted him and I asked his father and Pierre said to me, I'd like to work for my dad um, for his last year and then I'll come. Super Commander at the post, he holds on. Pierre on with his first winner here in Hong Kong. He's a man who's going to have a lot of success here. When he first got his license, I worry about him, you know, about the horses. Some horses, they haven't won a race before joining him. I don't know how he handled them, but uh, eventually he made winner of them. I'm really proud of him. Pierre will be hoping to have more winners coming up this Saturday at Sha Tin, and he does feature a first starter who's trialled well, a horse called Muggin. We move from that to the diary, and it's a bit of a different week as far as racing goes coming up with Saturday racing. That's not out of the norm. We then move to Monday here at Sha Tin, and Happy Valley is pushed back a day to next Thursday. So that is the details for the diary, as you can see on screen, start times and on-air times for all of them. Voting is now open for your chance to vote for your favourite horse, your favourite jockey, and who knows, you might even want to vote for this man. Hi everyone, Hugh Bowman here. I'd just like to thank you for welcoming me to Hong Kong in November. Uh, I've enjoyed a steady flow of support and success since I arrived, and uh, thank you to the fans for following me the way you do. 
a grandstand finish, and Russian Emperor goes back to back in the Champions and China Cup. I've enjoyed the challenge of Hong Kong. It's very different to my native homeland in Sydney. The pace of the racing, or the pace of the races I run at it is much faster, which suits my style of riding, and with a continued flow of support, I've enjoyed some great results. Win, lose or draw, if my horses run well, I'm satisfied with, with that. And on that particular day, uh, they, they all ran out of their skin. It was, a, it was a great afternoon for me, and I had a close second as well, so it was nearly five. He's four for you. Give that man a green jacket. Happy golf one. I'm certainly excited about what lies ahead next season with a fresh start. You know, I feel like I've laid a good foundation here with the racing scene. I'm enjoying my riding. I'd just like to say thank you for the support. It's been wonderful since I arrived here and vote me for top jockey. She's Apple. That has been Hong Kong Direct coming to you from Sha Tin. A reminder, the Hong Kong International Sale comes up Friday. Back here racing on Saturday. And we'll join you again next week for another edition of Hong Kong Direct.